This week we're going behind the scenes of a short film that I shot recently and how it completely changed my attitude to filmmaking. Now, I'll set the scene. So if, I, if I'm really honest, I think my attitude to filmmaking has got a little bit sensible lately. It's got a little bit rigid. In the last year, I've spent a lot of my time negotiating with clients. I've spent a lot of time preparing proposals and reading and writing contracts, coordinating and scheduling shoots. This has happened gradually over the years while my projects get more complex and I realised that actually I spent a good portion of my time developing projects that haven't even been filmed, that probably will never be filmed. And that is the reality of bigger projects. When there's more people involved, there are more emails, there are more spreadsheets, and there's more chance of the project being cancelled. And don't get me wrong, I do genuinely enjoy putting together a budgeting spreadsheet. And there's something really quite satisfying about crafting the perfect email to a client. Plus, of course, it's an absolute privilege to be spending my time working on these projects, even with the details and the logistics. But this recent shoot was so easygoing and so spontaneous that it really took me back to the kind of filmmaking that I did all through my teenage years. I went out the day before the shoot and bought some props. I just contacted a couple of actors and I filmed this whole short at home in my flat, making use of things that are already available. I scribbled down a shot list on the morning of the shoot, which is exactly what I used to do back when I was 12 or 13, filming in my parents' house, just making stuff with no money. Because we only had two actors and two crew members, it was really easy to add extra shots or to just completely change what we were doing and adjust things without really needing to think about it or talk about it too much. That reminds me of the shoots I used to do with my school friends, where we'd just kind of figure it out as we went. Although I did have a script, I decided not to toil over every single line of dialogue, making sure it sounded perfectly natural and represented the character. I decided to just let the actors kind of workshop the lines. We'd have a little chat before the take and then just try a couple of different things. And I found more and more that the kind of loose style that comes through with improvised dialogue is really special. And to be honest, all of this made me question whether I've spent my last few years being far too cautious and sensible with my filmmaking. A classic example of that would be camera movement. It's something that's so easy to intellectualize. But for this short, I didn't really give the movement much thought at all. We had plenty of simple tripod shots that we filmed on the Manfrotto 608 video head, just grabbing the character's point of view and then moving over to get their reaction shots. We used the Syrup Magic Carpet, which is also the sponsor of this video, to give a little bit of movement, you know, like when the camera tracks left, just simply following the character who is slowly walking through the hallway trying not to make any noise. The scene is about tension and kind of upping the ante when another piece of information is revealed. Sometimes it's tempting to overanalyze movement, you know, trying to find poetic justification for every single tiny decision. But to be honest, I just thought about it very simply, moving from right to left because the character is moving from right to left. It just intuitively felt like that would make sense. Now, it turns out there are some benefits that come with this easygoing approach. Rather than coming up with the most efficient schedule that stops us needing to move equipment around too much, we pretty much just filmed chronologically. And you know what? That makes it a lot easier to keep track of where the props are supposed to be and making sure that we keep continuity. Another simple solution came when we were setting up the slider shot. Uh, yeah, that's the problem is that we've got all this stuff in the way. At first it seemed like the camera was set up too low and the banisters were really blocking the view of the camera. But rather than rearranging the whole location, I could just remove one of the pieces of furniture from the room and just move up a couple of steps. Now because the slider was long enough, we could still get our entire movement and now suddenly the camera was just at the right height where it could see clearly. Yep. Now, of course, there's a lot of value in being diligent and dedicated, really caring about filmmaking. I'm just thinking about that balance between work and play, the balance between business and creativity. When I first started making films, I didn't question myself so often. 
I was blissfully ignorant and carefree. Whereas these days I tend to be so keen to do a good job that I want to do lots of planning and lots of research, lots of redrafts and re-edits. And sometimes that desire to do a good job stops me from making anything at all, you know. Even this video has been in the works on and off for about eight months. Syrup contacted me ages ago about featuring their magic carpet sliders in an episode, and although they didn't send a script or tell me what to say in the video, there were still plenty of details for us to figure out with them, and I had my own challenge finding the right time to shoot this. I guess every person and every project has to try and find the balance between being too careless and being too careful. You know, I think my goal this year is to try and stop taking myself too seriously. You know, even now, here I am making a video about overthinking. I'm thinking about overthinking. So I think this year I'm going to try and be a little bit more intuitive. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next time.